or now that we've got so much background in terms of multiplying, dividing, and adding and subtracting radicals. We're going to go back to multiplication a little bit more and look at multiplying a monomial times a binomial. You're fluent in that. You're very fluent in that. You know that, so let's look at something that you're comfortable with. You know that this 2 needs to be distributed times through the binomial. So the 2 times x is 2x. And then 2 times the 5, positive 5, is a positive 10. So you've distributed. When you do that with radicals, when you take a monomial times a binomial, you have to take the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, and then add to it the square root of 2 times the square root of 5. Let's write that down. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, I'm going to write it just like this. Square root of 2 times the square root of 3. And then add to that square root of 2 times the square root of 5. And now the product rule for radicals allows me to call this um, the square root of 6, and it allows me to call this the square root of 10, and I know that neither of those can be reduced. I can't reduce this at all, square root of 10. It doesn't have a perfect square in it. They cannot be added because they are not like terms. So I have to stop. I'm all done. Let's see. Take another one. And let's see now if we can do this without writing down the middle step. So because of the product rule for radicals, would you be able to say that the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 15? Got to keep the radical simple. It's not like you get to get rid of it. The square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6, plus sign in between. All done. Can't do anything else. The 15 can't be reduced. The 6 can't be reduced. So I will not be able to add those. I have to stop there. Let's take now a binomial times a binomial. And I think I'm going to go off to the right here. This is what it's going to look like. I'm going to go off to the right here and do a simpler one. So let's say that you had, um, let's just go with x plus 3 times x minus 4. So you FOIL that by taking the x times the x and getting x squared. And x times a minus 4 is a minus 4x. And then a positive 3 times x is a positive 3x. And then a positive 3 times a minus 4 is a minus 12. And then you take those middle terms that are like terms and you combine them, add their coefficients. A negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1x. It's not necessary to put that 1 there. This could be written as x squared minus x minus 12. That's the preferred way to write it. And let's do the same thing over here with this one. And I'm going to write it full out. So I'm going to write here that we're going to, we're going to take... 3 times 5, and that'll be 15. And then this 3 times this minus square root of 2. So I'm going to put a minus sign here. 3 times the square root of 2. Here I have a plus times a plus. So a plus, and I'm going to put the 5 in front times the square root of 7. 5 times the square root of 7. I, I can't, mult, they're not both under a radical. I can't call them the square root of 35. This one's an uh, integer. It's got to go in front of that radical. But this one right here, watch, be careful. Um, a positive times a negative is a negative. I'm going to have to erase this so it doesn't look too cluttered. And then I'm just going to write the square root of 7 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 14. So I'll clean that up next. So this right here is 15. This is just 3 times the square root of 2. This is 5 times the square root of 7. And that is the square root of 14. Not a one of these can, can be combined. Sometimes they can, but not here. These are not like terms. This one has a square root of 2. This one has a square root of 7. I can't combine their coefficients. I can't reduce that one because 7 and 2 are its only factors. That is my answer. Don't worry too much about your order. Um, those four terms have to be there. Let's look at one last, um, maybe two last problems. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Um, Let's look at uh, 5 plus the square root of 3 and 5 minus the square root of 3. So I just want you to see that these are two binomials that look almost exactly alike, but one has a plus sign in the binomial and the other one has a minus sign. So I want you to see how their middle terms will disappear. It's called the sum and difference of like terms. So let's see if we can also go straight to the products in each one. So 5 times 5 is 25. And then here, I have a minus sign. 
5 times the square root of 3 is 5 times the square root of 3. Here I have a plus sign right here. So I have a plus sign, 5 times the square root of 3. That's all I can write for that. And this plus times this minus gives me a minus, and I have a square root of 3 times the square root of 3. If you could automatically just write down 3, that would be great. A lot of people need to write down the fact that the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. And then they have to say, oh yeah, that's 3. Um, so it would be best if you could go right to saying square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3, because this is the square root of 9. Would you notice that when you multiply the sum and difference of like terms, this one and this one are like, and I can add their coefficients, and a negative 5 and a positive 5 adds to be 0, so those terms disappear. So I have this 25 here, and that minus 3 right there, this whole thing turns out to be 22. I got rid of all the radicals. That's going to be a very convenient tool in our last um, section for this, um, this segment. Let's do one more problem. Um, and that is, let's be careful. If I ask you to take a binomial and square it, would you please write it out two times so that you FOIL it appropriately? So would you write this out as the square root of 3 plus the square root of 10 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 10? So you don't forget to do the first terms. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. Right here, plus sign, square root of 3 times square root of 10 is square root of 30. I'm using the product rule for radicals. I'm allowed to multiply the, the value under the radicals. This is also square root of 30. Square root of 10 times square root of 3, plus sign right here. And then finally, a positive times a positive is a positive. And the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is just 10. It was the square root of 100, which is 10. Finally, these are like terms. They add to be 13. And these are like terms. They have the same number under the radical. They can't be reduced. I have to add their coefficients. Tell me what their coefficients are. There's a 1 here. There's a 1 here. They add to be 2 of those. And I'm all done. I have multiplied this binomial and simplified the expression. Uh, let's see. We are now going to rationalize the denominator in the next segment. We're going to get rid of those radicals in the basement again. It's not too challenging. It involves a lot of multiplication. It's kind of fun.